Hey everybody, it's your boys Seth and Paul. We're here for another wonderful episode of Everything Money. Thank you for joining us. As always, thank you for joining us on YouTube. Paul, I love you. Welcome, welcome into the show. How have you been, my dear friend? Well, I saw you three days ago. I know. I just said that just as like some pleasantries. You know, oh, gotcha. Doing. That's what yeah. you're doing. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. If you, this is the first time, doing? it's the first time you've ever seen this show. <laughs> uh, this is a dynamic. Paul and I bust chops. Paul is a multi gazillionaire with multiple businesses, houses in Mexico. He does really well, and he's here to teach you all the ins and outs about investing. What am I? I'm just a schmuck who uh, doesn't know anything about investing, and I ask the questions you're wondering. But um, something that's been hitting for us lately is looking at stocks. We use an stocks. eight. We use an eight. Thank you, thank you, Paul. We use an eight pillar approach to look at stocks, and um, and we're going to do that right now. Now, Paul, I love Home Depot. Now, you're more of a Lowe's guy. I like Lowe's ever. because I feel like their customer service is better, and I think their selection is better. Well, he's wrong, but I like Home Depot, <laughs> and I was just there yesterday, Paul. You, should you don't say, give got, any customer service. I got you have to, like, Christmas. I got Christmas you. lights, and um, I. Really love what. No, you're going. wrong. Where are you going? I'm going to get my phone. Okay. So to, what we're going to do, Paul, is this is off the request line. Where did we get this request? We got this off of our Patreon. Visit Patreon.com/slash/EverythingMoney. Join our Patreon if you're interested in learning about more. But why from your should Uncle they? Paul. Well, I mean, there's so it's much. It's way more access. There's so much happening in the world. There's way more access to us. You will join. Uh, I'll get in. I'll get into the Patreon as we get going, Paul. Let's hit up Home Depot versus Lowe's. Let's look at Home Depot first. If you have it up there, baby, let's do it. So I think we've looked at Home Depot before, but let's still do it again. Uh, we looked at it when it came down to the um, um, what's it called? When we look at HD Supply, then buying HD Supply. That's right. That's right. Okay, so we're so gonna of our eight pillars, what is the market cap for Home Depot, Paul? So this is not a pillar, but the market cap is two hundred ninety-five million. So basically three hundred, sorry, billion. Basically three hundred billion dollars. Now what that means is. A lot of people look at the stock price. I don't look at the stock price. Do we have, I don't think I even look at the stock price until way later. Yes. What you're looking at, the market cap's what matters. That's what tells you this is the company's price if you bought every share outstanding, right? So basically what you're buying is that company based on that valuation. So let's call it $300 billion to make it easy. And pillar number one is the PE ratio. We want the PE ratio. This is price to earning. This is the stock price to their earnings. We want this less than 20, 20 right, Paul? Yes, and it's currently 24. So that's an X right there. The next thing is profit margin. We want it over 10%. That is a check mark. It is over 10%. Are you shocked? Because normal retail is quite low, Paul. Home Depot yeah, being over 10%. This is, I mean, this is more specialty, I think. It's not just everybody's buying it. I mean, their gross margin is 34%, um, which is pretty good. I think Walmart's gross margin is 25%. But again, Walmart's trying to sell everything to everyone. So I think when you get more specialty on home goods and things, home products, things like that, you're gonna have a better margin. So, so far we have a check there and an X there. Let's All look right. at pillar number three, which is revenue. FYI. Growth. Go ahead, Paul. Look at their dividend yield, 2.2%. So what that means is they're gonna, they're gonna pay out 2.2% of 300 billion every year. So how much is that? You tell me, baby. $6.6 6 billion. So let's call it 6.5 billion, just to be conservative. They're paying out 6.5 billion. Why does that matter? When we look at their free cash flow, free cash flow is used to pay out dividends. I wanna make sure that before you fall in love with this number, because the market currently is paying 1.6%, so this is above the market by a good chunk. I wanna make sure they can actually afford that dividend year in and year out. So what that means, folks, is when Paul looks at our, our pillar number seven, looks at the free cash flow they have to move around every year, they have to have enough to pay out that uh, dividend, which I was surprised, as you might be, is that dividend is not always safe, Paul. So sometimes people are in love with dividend stocks, and it's not guaranteed, which I didn't know, I thought it was. Correct. Let's so let's go to the revenue. First, so, so now we have one check mark yep. and one X. Yep, go ahead, Paul. Pillar number three is revenue growth. 88.5, 94.6, 100.9, 108.2, 110. Check mark there. Sounds good. How about pillar number four? What do you want to do? Why are you in a rush? I'm just going fast, baby. Don't I go fast. Okay, Does go somebody ahead. last time you went fast and because of me, why was it in such a rush? Okay. Relax. We want people to understand this. Make sure you're smashing that like button in the yes. bottom right corner. Listen. Like it if you agree with me that Seth should yeah, slow down. That's true. Make sure you are smashing that like. Listen, I love this, Paul, is that you, as you're watching this, if you want this education about stocks and companies, you don't have to pay anything. Just tell YouTube to pay us by hitting that like button and subscribe. We love you guys. Keep going, Paul. So one thing, I would want to know how much of this is organic growth, which And Paul, means... the fans want to know those shorts. Get a wide angle. Nathan, get a wide angle. Look at these. These are new things. shorts. I just got these yesterday. They're somewhat iridescent and see-through, translucent. Are they really? Yeah, they're translucent, Paul. Oh, I can see full junk and buttocks. <laughs> did you see the Greg Norman video picture that came out? I did not. You know who Greg Norman is? The golfer? Or? Yeah. Oh. So he was like walking the beach with his dog and Go he on. was like wearing no underwear and wearing just swim trunks. Go on. He's got a massive... T scrotum, I assume? No, massive... 
Ding dong. Oh, Lord. Everybody go look at it. It's just, you know, it's huge. And this is what Paul's bringing you, that cutting edge <laughs> investment knowledge that you need to know. Paul, it just came out yesterday. Look at profit growth for... Uh, I was not number... done yet. You were oh, just interrupting right. me. Revenue growth. Keep going. So we want to know how much of this is organic. When I say organic, same store sales. You want to see a lot of... You want to still see same stores, the stores that already existed for over a year, growing in their revenue. They've obviously opened no, new locations. So you want to see how much of this growth is new locations versus how much is from the internal sales. Pillar number four is profit growth, Paul. Pop, profit growth. I almost said profit growth. Profit growth. Mm -hmm. 7 billion, 8 billion, 8.6, 11.1, 11.2. Another check mark there. Yeah. Beautiful. Pillar number five is shares outstanding. We want this number going down. The number of shares, we want this going down. Now, I have great news for everybody. Go on. We are creating the Everything Money app. We're creating the Everything Money website. I'm going to have it mimic this look as much as possible. That way you guys are used to it and it'll be on there. I'm trying to figure out a free version of the website. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we're going to do that, but I'll try to figure out a free version of the website that'll let you to log in, create an account, and maybe get access to 10 financial statements every month for free or something like that. That'll be a work in progress, but we want you to be part of the app so you get to continue on with us. Speaking so, of access, go to patreon.com slash everything money. This is our new Patreon page. Paul, we were astounded. We got so many patrons just this past week, and it's been up for like five days. We, we beat our goal. Our goal was to get 20. We got 27. The Discord channel, you'll get access to the Discord channel where you'll be in, you'll be conversing with like-minded people, disciplined investors. And me. And, and Paul. Seth, and Seth. And, and Trader Don, Mo. And Trader Mo on a daily basis. If you select like the right channel. We're not doing it for everybody. But the, the worst right case tier. is, yeah. as long as you're a Patreon member, you're going to get the app for free. And the app, we plan on charging 15 to $25 a month. You'll get the app for free. You so, will also get Paul and Seth uncensored fireside chat videos where you can join us in a very small format to ask your investment questions about anything, real estate, stocks, all of it. Paul, keep going. Let's go to- So the uh, number of shares outstanding. Yep, go ahead, Another Paul. check mark, guys. 1.27 billion down to 1.09 billion. So Home Depot is doing pretty well. So far, the only thing we have not liked is their PE ratio. Yep. Let, and the ratios of profit are the important ones. So let's go to the next thing. Pillar number seven is the big daddy, the granddaddy of them all is free cash flow growth over the past five no, years. No, we haven't done current assets. Total oh, current assets. 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 I just skipped that. Stick, skip that one, Paul. Assets, current assets greater than current liabilities. So total current assets is basically cash on hand. Are there other components that make up the current assets that aren't really cash? Correct, like inventory. But for, let's just keep it simple right now. Total current assets is $34.5 billion. Total current liabilities, is how much money they are owed currently. How much they owe now or in the next year, I think I believe is the exact number, mm -hmm. 25.4. Check mark there. They have plenty to pay off all their current debts right now. Now we will get to free, free cash flow Now we'll get to my growth. favorite one and your favorite one. Number seven, Seth. free cash flow growth, baby. Okay, this is an older company. This is a bigger company. So we talk about having it be 20 times. This, we wanna have the free cash flow you wanna figure out where, what multiplier you wanna use. Like PE, we talk about less than 20 because we want to be able to grow into a number. The historical average for PE is 15, so the historical average for a free cash flow should be around 15 because over long periods of time, your free cash flow is your cash from operations, how much you make from operating your business, less the capital expenditures, how much money you invest back into your property, plant, and equipment, your fixed assets, because that is money that has to be done to keep the business sustainable. And why is this pillar so important to you, Paul? Uh, this is the money that's actually used to pay dividends, buy back stock, to reinvest in growth, things like that that are important to investors. Keep going, baby. So free cash flow. The one thing I like about this, they don't spend a lot on capital expenditures. If you look at this versus their, their cash from operations, it's a small percentage. This is awesome. It's like less than 20%. That's great. So Seth, do you have your calculator out? I'm ready. 7.8, 8.1, um, 10.3. Um, 10.6 and 11.1. So first off, They're check growing. mark, it is growing here, folks. So pillar number seven is we do see growth here. Now what's the average, Seth? 9.5. 9.5. Now the question is, what are we gonna multiply by this by? Now normally we do 20, Paul, why is that? Um, because it all depends, that, that's where the art of investing comes. Like what is your multiplier gonna be? I do see nice growth here. So I do want to go with a higher number because as you start at a lower number and increase, you know, if you just put it as smaller, it's an average, the average here is 9.5, which is 20, which is almost 20% lower than the most previous year. So you want to give a higher average if it's growing consistently and steadily. So I think 20 is still fine here. 
Okay. So let's call it $200 billion just to round up. Okay, it's 190, but okay, Paul, I love you. It's 190, but just round up, give it a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Okay. It's paying us, first off, they, they owe 6.6 .6 billion in dividends, we said. Look at that, they can cover it. They can cover it. Their free cash flow steady, it's growing, and they can cover it. If you look at the previous five years, they can cover it. So we want a $200 so, billion dollar value. So oh, wait, slow down, Paul. So pillar number eight, this is price to free cash flow. That's that number, 200, that's what that means. Right, now this means, right now we multiply by 20, the value of the company should be would be 200 billion or less. And right now the value of the company is about $300 billion. So what so does that it's mean? it's overpriced. Oh, I see, okay, got That's it. what that means. It means the company is selling for about 30 times free cash flow, right? We don't want, that's too expensive. Like for me, a company like Home Depot, to pay 30 times free cash flow, you wanna see a lot of growth potential that can grow into that number. You wanna be able to sit there and say, hey, I'm gonna make so much revenue, um, free cash flow growth that'll justify it. I think 30 for a company as big as Home Depot is very difficult. What number, so go back to just the general financials because someone might say, well, this stock is already quote unquote expensive, Paul. When I look at the price, $275, that's, well, don't worry about that. You want to look at the ratios to determine if something's expensive. It's selling for 24 times earnings and selling for 30, almost 30 times free cash flow. It's expensive. So uh, what I'm going to start doing is trying to give an idea from a very 500 foot view. This is not set in stone. It isn't saying I'm right. It's just sitting there saying, if you put a gun to my head and said, give me a value from Home Depot, what would it be? So if I wanted to sell for $200 billion, that means the stock's going to fall up about 33%. So I'm looking at this saying, the stock is currently at $274 if you look up here. And we want it to sell for 33% less, so a third. So about 90 bucks less. So I'm looking at it saying, call it 180 bucks for Home Depot, roughly. That's where I sit there off the cuff saying, that's where I wanna be for Home Depot. Now, does that mean I'm right? No, it could be 200, it could be 150. The one thing Warren Buffett says is when you consider intrinsic value, everybody's gonna come up with a different number. Now, me as a value investor, I want a discount to what I think it's worth. So if I think it's worth 180 to 200, I want to be paying 100 to 120 for it. That's me. But I'm also looking for bigger returns. I'm looking for 15, 20% returns in my investments. So for you guys, here's where maybe it's, it's probably worth. Now you sit there and say, Paul, but come on, 275 bucks. I know, but look at this. In 2018, it was selling. If you look at 2018, let's pull up the chart here before we even look at the technicals. Mm -hmm. If you look at 2018, it was selling for between 190 all the way down to 160 and finished at around 218. It was there. Mm -hmm. So I look at that going, guys, we're not far off. Even in early 2012, 2020, I mean, we were at 184. So I'm looking at saying, guys, it will be there again. It could easily fall there. It's a good stock, good finance, it's a good company, good financials. You want to add this to your radar of companies you want to buy in the long run. I just think you can buy it at much lower prices, especially with the recent run-up in stocks that was astronomical, so just wait. While Paul pulls up the financials for Lowe's, we're gonna compare Home Depot to Lowe's. I remind you, please make sure you're smashing that like button. Paul and I give us, we give you um, our dearest thanks for supporting the channel. Paul, we got a beautiful uh, comment on Patreon. Uh, one of our patrons joined just to really give back for the two years we've been giving on. Uh, uh, well, that's committing. very nice. Who yeah. was it? Let's give him um, a shout out. Um, I, I actually just forgot, Paul. I'm, I got my mind on stocks at the moment. Was it <clears throat> Mitchell Palooza or somebody Probably. Else? Yeah, it was Mitch Palooza. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, someone joined our Patreon and just really wanted to give us a little support just for the the hours and hours we've committed to this, Paul, which is thousands of hours over two years doing this, and we're not going to quit anytime soon. So And money. And, and money on your end. <laughs> tons of money. Listen, I don't mean that to be... But I just look at it saying, hey, my, my business partners love the fact that we're generating revenue now, even though it's only, you know, six hundred or thousand dollars a month. It's something that can get us back into this thing costs me a hundred grand a year or more just to operate. Now you are looking pretty good. This chest muscles and buys are really he's been working out, folks. I mean, um for the you know who, who buy I like. For the three ladies who are watching, make sure you smash that thumbs Sean up. Sean McVeigh. Who is this? The coach of the Rams. Oh, yeah, he's a very handsome guy. Well, I also like his physique because he's a shorter guy like me. Yeah, yeah. He's taller than me, but in the world of football You're doing great. Well, I just sit there and say, like, listen, he's I, I'm I'm not one of those guys who's ever gonna be super lean, like mm -hmm. Matt Jensen, my chess coach, he's six foot one, like 130 pounds. He's not really 130 pounds, but he's like 158 pounds. The guy is skinny. super skinny. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, lows. Lows. So remember, guys, Home Depot was 300 billion dollar market cap. Mm -hmm. Lows, 116. Wow, third. Home Depot was 24 times PE. Lows, 21. Close. So Lowe's is better on the PE, but it is a smaller company. 1,970 stores. How many did Home Depot have? And I'll look it up right now. Let's Keep going, Paul. Okay, so 
Right now, it's still an X for lows in the PE because it's above 20. Now, margin, profit margin. What the heck is this? Now, lows are Home Depot was up. Uh, uh, so Home Depot has 2,200 stores. So it's so slightly bigger. Similar. 10%. Big so, ten. Wow, they're making a lot. That's funny. Okay. Yeah. So lows right now, and look at their profit margin. 3.1% versus lows. So this is Home Depot with 10.5%. Yeah. Wow. How can that be, Paul? I don't know. I don't know. We'll look at this. Okay, keep going. Um, how about let's go. Now look at the gross margin though. It was very similar. Home Depot's gross margin was 34%. Lowe's is about 33%. Is Lowe's prices just cheaper? That's why. Well, no, this gross much? margin here oh. is saying that it's about the same margin and everything. It doesn't matter if it's cheaper or not cheaper. The point is they're spending more money to get that. Now, there could be a reason for this. There could be a in the last quarter. Yeah, I don't know. So by the way, they're also the dividend yield, 1.6% versus 2.2% for Home Depot. So Home Depot had a better profit margin on the bottom line, had a better dividend, but was more expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are things to think about as we, uh, as we look at the numbers here so far. Revenue growth, pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years. Okay, so revenue growth, we go to the financial statements, we go to the income, income statement right here, okay, annually. Now, 59, 64, 67.9, 70, 70 and a half. So it's a check mark there. Pretty good. It is pretty good. Want to look at a uh, profit growth, pillar number four? So profit I think growth. Home Depot was about double the size or maybe a little bit less than double. Profit growth, 2.5, 3.1, 3.4, 2.3, 4.28. Check mark there. Something happened here that dropped them. But so far, pretty good. Let's look at something here. Let's figure out why they're, um, I mean, they're, they're so 4.3 billion on seven, 70 billion, that's not very good. Number of shares outstanding. Mm -hmm, pillar number five. 927 down to 777. So that's check mark that's there. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good there. How about current assets greater than current liabilities, which is pillar number six? All of these pillars, folks, will be available in the Everything Money app. It's coming out six to nine months. And uh, you'll I said get, nine to 12 months. I know, I like to shorten it up a bit. And you'll have under promise and over deliver. You'll have access to that app uh, through nine to 12 our, months, kids. Don't listen to Seth. Through our Patreon page. Go ahead. All right. Paul. If I ask Seth for something fast, he's like, Paul, do you know what involved with this? Three months. Seth wants this. He's like, hey, it's going to be available tomorrow. I didn't just, think you'd catch that. I was just like, <laughs> I was just going to hurry it along. But go ahead, Paul. Keep going. All right. Total current assets $27 billion. This is their cash on hand, how much money they have basically sitting in their coffers right now. Now, total current liabilities is. 19.5, 19.6, check mark there. So they have, pl they have plenty of money by $7 billion or so, $6 billion to pay all of their current liabilities. Let's go to free cash flow growth. Okay, so free cash flow growth. I imagine their free cash flow is gonna be pretty steady, just like uh, Home Depot. Now remember, mm -hmm. free cash flow, Home Depot is spending about 20% of, of their operating cash flow on capital expenditures. It looks like they spend, low spends more. So do you have your calculator out, Uncle Seth? Oops, sorry, I'm ready. Go ahead. All right, so we have 3.6, So it's still a check mark, but it's a little less consistent than Home Depot. Home Depot was a straight, was a line up. This is kind of like a choppy lineup. 4.2 is the average. 4.2. Times now, if we were willing to pay twenty times for Home Depot, mm -hmm. I think Home Depot is better than Lowe's from what we've seen in terms of margin, in terms of uh, dividend. I think we should pay less for uh, for for Lowe's. So let's multiply this by fifteen, equals sixty three billion dollars. Yep. Okay. What was Home Depot? What was uh, Lowe's value? Let's go back to the main page. We want to pay sixty three billion. Oh, One sixteen. One sixteen. All right. So. This has got to fall in half, guys, almost. This is a lot different. So right now, the stock is at 154. I mean, I'm looking at this saying, when it gets below 100, start looking at it. I don't think it's even worth less than 100, but at less than 100, start looking at the stock. And when the, when the market cap's around $60 billion, start looking at it. Because I think that Home Depot is a better financial company than Lowe's. They have better profit margin. They have um, a better dividend. They have better free cash flow. They have a better percentage of operating cash flow going to cap to um, to free cash flow, so I look at it saying, I think Home Depot is the better buy here. So I might be proven wrong about why. Maybe I should go back to. By the way, even though I like Lowe's more in terms of customer service and everything, I go to Home Depot more. Home Depot is easier access to me, um, yeah. and we do a lot more with their accounts and stuff like that. Home Depot wins. 
I think Home Depot, even though it's more expensive, I think it's closer to their regular value. And I think you should be looking at them there. Momentum on both. Ah, momentum on both. Forgot about that. Let's look at momentum. So we're starting to look at, and one of the things we're going to have in the app is we're going to start providing you with when the 200-day moving average goes above the 300-day. We used to look at 100-day, but we found that the 200-day moving average over the 300-day, when it crosses over if you buy, is a better return on your money than the 100-day. So looking at... Looking at, this is Lowe's right here, guys. It crossed right here at about $100 a share. So if you bought that back then, you'd be at 50% higher just by doing that. So right now, it's, they're, 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 they're closer together, but if you'd bought when the 100-day moved, when the 200-day when went above the 300-day, you'd have done pretty well. Now, let's go to Home Depot. And yes, I know, I will close that thing up. Go to the three year. Let me save this chart, set as default. All right, guys, so here, the tuner day crossed right here. So you'd be up, you'd have probably bought around two, what is that? 230, no, you'd have bought it, sorry. Yeah, you bought it 230 and now it's at 270. So you'd be up if you'd bought the 20 day, when the 200 day went above the 300 day there. The momentum is positive, but it, you, you don't buy now just the momentum is positive. What you want to find is the points when the 200 day goes above the 300 day and buy right then and there. And the app will be able to do that for you and it'll tell you which S&P 500 companies are doing that. If, if you recall, I did tell you that Home Depot was better. Probably should have listened to me. Thank you to our patrons. Thank you to our followers. Michelle, Mitch Belusa, Ayrton, John, Lee, Dominic, Marcos. I'll name you all later. Da uh, Daniel, Gavin, we love you guys. Thanks for supporting us, Sean. Love you too. Thanks for following Everything Money channel. Like, subscribe, and because Paul needs these likes to live, baby. He's, he's, I do. He, he needs them like a teenage girl. Love you guys. See My you. watch collection is, is, is waning. <laughs> love you. Bye.